The Land Before Time, The Illustrated Story. Chapter 6, False Hopes. The moon suddenly came out from behind a cloud, and Littlefoot could now see that the screaming creature was Sarah. Sarah, what happened? He yelled. Why are you so frightened? Frightened? Me? Why are you so frightened? We're not, Littlefoot stammered. Well, you should be frightened, Sarah continued. I've just met Sharptooth, and he's alive. That's impossible, Littlefoot said. Sharptooth is dead. Sarah stamped her feet. He's alive! I saw him. His one big eye was looking at me. I fought him bravely and just barely escaped. Littlefoot didn't believe her story, but he admired her courage. Would you like to join us? He asked. Why not? Sarah said with a shrug. You will need a brave three-horn with you. The next morning, the four of them trudged on across the barren land. When the bright circle was high in the sky, Ducky came upon a nest with one unhatched egg up lying among broken shells. Strange sounds were coming from the egg, snoring, then yawning. Ducky gave a cry of delight and tapped the egg. It started to crack open. A sleepy head appeared. Ducky quickly peeled away the rest of the shell, and there stood a sleepy-eyed spike tail. You are a spike tail, so I will call you Spike, Ducky said. The rest of the group came running up. This is my new friend Spike, said Ducky. Can we take him with us? Huh? Huh? He'll slow us down, Sarah said. All Spike Tails can do is eat and burp. Sharptooth will catch up and eat us. No more dumb stories, Littlefoot said sternly. I'm telling the truth, Sarah cried. Over Sarah's protests, Spike joined the group. As they were crossing a barren valley, Littlefoot found a brook trickling up through the parched ground. He sniffed the air. <laughs> I smell tree stars, he cried. Littlefoot raised his neck and peered through an opening between some huge boulders in the between some huge boulders. In the valley below, was a cluster of beautiful green trees. When he told the others about it, everyone started to talk at once. The Great Valley, Ducky cried. Yes, the Great Valley, echoed Sarah. But wait, said Littlefoot. We haven't seen the Long Neck Rock yet or the mountains that burn. Sarah was too excited to listen. She started down the ravine with the others close behind. Suddenly, there was a great rumble. The ground began to shake, and they looked around in panic. A huge herd of bump heads was swooping down on the trees. It didn't take them long to pick the trees clean. Then they thundered away again. Sarah looked around angrily. Look what those greedy bump heads did, she cried. What happens to me now? I'm still hungry. You hungry? Petrie whistled. I empty all the way to my head. Now we at Great Valley and still not got green foods. But Littlefoot insisted that this wasn't the Great Valley. It is not a great anything, Ducky agreed. Nope, nope. Walking from tree to tree, the group found one that still had some leaves at the very top. It was too high for even Littlefoot to reach. Then he got an idea. He had everyone form a pyramid with Petrie at the top. But before they could get at the leaves, the pyramid collapsed, leaving Petrie and Ducky hanging from a single leaf. A moment later, the leaf tore, and Petrie and Ducky fell towards the ground, each still clutching half of the leaf. Littlefoot took a deep breath and blew upwards. 
the leaf caught the air, and Petrie and Ducky floated down. In the next moment, part of the branch that was full of tasty-looking green food fell. Everyone dived in to feast, except Sarah. She stubbornly tried to get the rest of the branch down by butting the tree, but only made herself dizzy. Littlefoot felt sorry for her, and when she butted the tree once more, he threw a tuft of leaves into the air. It landed right next to her, and she proudly looked around. See, she said, I can take care of myself. She went off and munched her food. And I'm not afraid to be alone, she shouted. I'm not afraid of sharp tooth. But I hope he doesn't eat any of you. The little group looked at each other anxiously. Don't worry, said Littlefoot. There isn't any sharp tooth. But that night, Petrie, Spike, and Ducky made sure they had plenty of company. First, they snuggled near Sarah. Then they snuggled near Littlefoot. In the middle of the night, when she was sure they were all asleep, Sarah crept up to everyone else and snuggled in too. The next morning, as wisps of fog drifted by overhead, Sarah woke up and sniffed the air. <laughs> Something was out there in the gray mist. Then she looked down and realized that the large hole in which they had made their bed was really a giant footprint. Sharptooth's footprint. Wake up! Wake up, everybody! She whispered loudly. Hey, stop that, yelled Littlefoot. I want to sleep. A terrible, familiar roar shook the air. The fog the young travelers saw me through the fog, the young travelers saw, to their horror, the huge shape of Sharptooth. And because of Littlefoot's yelling, he saw them too. With another terrible cry, the beast thundered toward them, his enormous mouth wide open, and his one good eye glinting with hatred. Stay tuned for Chapter 7. See you later. Bye!